Hi, this is Anne with Fiber Designs by Anne, and this is my four core challenge project, Bird and Ivy. Thanks to Ina at Ina's Art Room for hosting her four core challenges. It's really fun to see all the projects that other artists and people make. See the description for more information about Ina's four core challenges and how you can participate and the materials used in my Bird and Ivy piece. The challenge was to include a circular substrate and two or more textures, a bird, and stamps and stencils. So let's get started. For the bird, I'm going to use this little piece that I embroidered the bird on with just some hand-painted fabric. And I used an actual ivy leaf to make the stamp and then I cut out a little piece of paper just to make, uh, just add a little gold because of what I'm going to do on the outside edge for a stencil. So I did a stamp a stencil on the bird in this piece. What I'm going to do is use, these are cake um, cardboards for making a cake, putting a cake on. So I have two, two of those and I cut the center out of one. And then I added a little rope across around the inside edge. So that's my texture, one of my textures. And the plan is to use that piece that I cut out. I have a piece of batting. This happens to be wool batting. And I, that's the center I cut out. And I made it a little bit smaller. Uh, just cut like a quarter inch around the edge. And I'm going to lay my bird on that. So a lot of this ivy is not going to show. And he's going to go on top of this. And then eventually that will be the round part and I'll attach it to the solid circle. And so what I'm going to do is decorate this and I'm going to use some tool netting type stuff and some coils. These are my um, fabric coils that they're like quilling only I use fabric and I have a video for that I'll maybe post it in, in the description. And I'll add those. I've also made some, these are kind of funky, but I made some ivy out of paper clay and they're a little rough. I may sand them, I may not, but that I'll, I'll put those on and that'll give us some more texture and that'll be kind of fun. And then of course I'll paint it. So I'm gonna start by applying the tool mesh with soft gel medium and a cremial brush. And I'm just gonna apply it to the cardboard area. Sorry about the glare here. I know that's really hard to see. Now I'm going to just let that dry. I did end up sanding my leaf, my ivy leaves and now I'm going to paint gesso on both sides of them and let them dry. I'm going to go ahead and glue my circle to the back and I'm leaving the, the side that'll show white for now. So I'm going to glue that on there. I've painted my ivy leaves and um, I decided to make some, these are fabric covered wire, make a few little tendril kind of things just to give it a little bit more, uh, just something a little bit different. My piece with the, the mesh 
uh, tool on it is dry and so I'm going to start placing those pieces. I needed to have my piece underneath my frame, so I put some plastic wrap stuff on top of my picture and put this down. Then I just laid out my pieces. This may change as I go. They're just resting there for now. I ta have taken some um, heavy gel medium. It says, yeah, heavy body gel medium, and I put it into a paste... I call it a pastry tube. It's just a baggie. But I like to do this because it lets me apply it right where I want it without quite as much waste and a little less on me, which it'll still get on me. But anyway, and I have a little allergies going on, so my voice is kind of going today. Sorry about that. So I can just pipe it out. And like I said, the pieces may move. And that's okay. So you can just really start just about any place and just put down a little gel medium, push the piece into it, that wasn't enough. So I'll just move on with this and speed it up. As you can see, it's, it can be a slow process. All my bits are attached and dry, and so now I'm going to use my black gesso and I'm going to cover the entire piece, including the silver rope. Okay, so that's all painted. If I see any places, I'll touch them up. And I'll just let that dry now. 
now the gesso is all done and it's dry and I'm going to go ahead and start with some dry brushing. I'm not totally sure what paint I'm going to use, although I think they're going to all be metallic. And, uh, but they'll be down in the description. Oh, I wanted to mention one thing. I went ahead while I had the, the uh, gel medium in the plastic bag like this, I went ahead and did a little bit of stems just around the ivy leaves just to give it a little more. Well, sorry to say, as happens sometimes, I didn't push the button hard enough and so I didn't record the gold, but I'll do another color and it's pretty much the exact same process. Sorry about that. After I had done the gold, I decided to use a Lumiere by Jacquard, which is a beautiful paint, but it turned the whole piece kind of pewter looking, so that wasn't working for me. So I got an older paint that I have. It's a little darker. It's called Crystal Green, and it's a decor art paint, metallic paint. And then after I did that, I used a, um, I went back to the original gold, which is Emperor's Gold, also by Decor Art. And then I was happier with that. So I've taken my fabric and I cut it down. The circle is glued on, you might remember. Then there's the batting, which I have wool just because I had it. And the bird is on there so that when I put this on, the frame on, it's a space on both sides of the tail and the branch. Now I'm going to apply some glue to this side of this and position it and glue it on and clamp the edges so that it'll stay tight. I cut out some little pieces of tool in case the clothespins would stick or leave some kind of mark. And then I used a lot more clothespins than I thought I was going to and I made sure I pressed it really tight. And then I took the gel medium in the same little baggie I had and I went around the edge so that it would give a little bit of a seal to the edge for what I was going to apply next. For the back, I painted some paper towel to match the front colors and the same paints. And then I cut it, tore it up into strips, put the part that had a straight edge around the side of the piece, and then brought it up to the back. And then I used my gel medium to glue all that down and then I, the torn pieces to cover the entire back like a collage. The back of my piece is finished and the edge is all done. And I decided that I'm going to put a little a grapevine around the outside edge. I started with a wreath like this, this little inexpensive wreath that you can purchase. I soaked it in, I soaked it in hot water for a while until I could stretch it out into this. 
And then I took, because this isn't very wide, I took the strands I thought I needed, and I think I've got four here, and I stretched them, cut them out, and pin pinched them with clothespins, and now I'm going to stitch it so that it makes a nice sort of rope of these vines. And then I'll apply it to the outside edge. So I'm just using some jute kind of string and a big needle that's not sharp, and we'll see how it goes. And I'm going to just have it tied on, and I'm just going to whip it around. If you like this video I hope you'll give it a thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed please do tap the bell so you get notifications of new videos. This has been Anne. Thanks a lot for watching.